Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Dead, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's Friday. We successfully completed another week. Life is good. Everything's going our way. And today I wanted to do another Agile, not so Agile episode of The Daily Stand-Up, and I wanted to talk to you about what drives you. Now, one of the things that I found of interest is in the Advanced Certified Scrum Master Training, one of the requirements, one of the learning objectives, is to review the five values of Scrum, which is the force, that's focus, openness, respect, commitment, and extreme courage. And after reviewing those, they ask you to challenge the people who are about to become advanced Scrum Masters and ask them not only do they apply the not only how do they apply these things in the workplace, but how do they apply these things in their personal life or personal growth? And I thought a good theme for today's podcast would be what drives you? Now, I'm going to start with a personal story. Just this past, well, I shouldn't say this past, a couple of weeks ago, my son was on his way to work. He drove out of the neighborhood. He was having a beautiful day. It was bright. It was sunny. It was a clear visibility day. Everything was going right. He was just on his way to work, innocently doing his thing. And uh, he's 17 years old. He's riding in the street and a car tried to pass a whole bunch of other vehicles on the road. And it was a one lane each way type road with a, with a clear, you know, you can pass here, can't pass here kind of thing going on. But what wound up happening is the car that was making the pass, you know, apparently didn't time it correctly with oncoming traffic. And they were about to be hit in a head on collision. So in order for them to avoid a head on collision, <clears throat> they decided to make a hard break right and swerve into a couple of cars that were on the road and put, literally pushed them off the road. Now, the good news is <coughs> they didn't make contact with my son's vehicle. The bad news is that after my son made a correct adjustment to get off the road enough to allow this car to not be hit, the car in front of him frantically slammed on their brakes, knee jerk reaction to the side and, and pulled my son off into a tree. Now, I was concerned because at the time I was out at my Utah office. This happened here in Florida. And I received notification via text from Polk County Emergency Services that your son was involved in, a, in an accident, Polk County uh, you know, Sheriff's Office. It was, it was a big deal. There was a lot going on. And when I received that, I had only one thought in my mind that I needed to hold my son, that I needed to see if he was okay. So I asked to speak with him, obviously. You know, I tried to call and I asked to speak with him. And when I spoke with him, he he was coherent, but he was saying things that didn't make a lot of sense. So anytime I asked about what happened or about the accident, and the answer was, I don't know. And it was concerning because, you know, I thought right away he probably had a concussion. But the EM, the, the medical staff there said, you know, emergency medical staff said, no, 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 he's going to be fine. But I wanted to make sure he got checked out anyway. And um, they asked him what his middle name was or what day of the week it was, and he didn't know. At which point I said, I'm flying back to Florida. So I hopped on a plane and I got here as fast as I could. This probably happened at about 3 Eastern. I was in my son's bedroom to check if he was okay from Utah at 9.57 Eastern. I think my point here is that there was nothing that was going to stand in the way of me making sure that the most important thing to me, my son, was okay. And I put myself in a position where it didn't matter what it took, that I was driven, I was motivated, I had fear, I had anger, I had joy that I was going to get to see my son, I had frustration that he had to go through this. I had a lot of emotions playing at the same time. And one thing that I remember specifically was when I was on my way to the airport, I got a call from the deputy from Polk County Sheriff, and she was fantastic, by the way. And she said, Dad, you know, he's going to be okay. I don't know that you need to come all the way out here. And I said, no, I really do. And I did. And I flew out to Florida, you know, and even if it was just to make sure he was okay and to take care of all the insurance stuff and all this other garbage. But the one thing that he, my son, said when he saw me, was that he was so sorry that he realized that 
even though it was out of his control, that he caused a lot of inconvenience and that he he totaled one of our vehicles and he was devastated. He said, I, I, there's no way I can afford to pay you back for that. And my answer to him was, you've already paid me back through your whole life, man. Just having you be the young man that you are and having you do the things that you do. Those are the things that motivate me and drive me to keep going. And I've discovered that my wife, my kids, those are the things that make me who I am. The people that I surround myself with, my team, when I'm at work. It's important for you to take yourself and envelop yourself and, and, and literally implant yourself inside of a group of people who are going to uplift you, who are going to support you, who are going to sustain you, who are going to help you, who are going to help make sure that you have all the tools you need to be successful. The good news is my son is incredibly okay that things in life are replaceable. But people aren't, and relationships aren't. So I guess my message for this Friday is a question. And it came originally from the Scrum Alliance. So I'm going to ask you, are you personally focused on the things that are most important? Are you open and honest in your communications with your spouse, your partner, your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids? Are you open and honest in your communication? Do you treat everyone with dignity and respect? Regardless of what the news says, the church says, your friend says, do you treat everyone with dignity and respect? And if not, why not, right? Are you able to take off those blinders and really just stop looking at the world as people of color or people of race or people of ethnicity or who they love or who they worship? None of that should matter. Are you able to treat everyone with dignity and respect? When you make a commitment, do you keep that commitment? Do you live up to the things you say you're going to do? One of the things you can ask any of my kids is if dad says he's going to do something, he does it. And I think that's so important because I think that in our per personal and professional lives, that, that should be something that we strive for. And then finally, <clears throat> do you exhibit extreme courage when you don't know the details, when you are scared, when you don't know exactly what's happening and you're thousands of miles away? Do you take a deep breath? Build up that courage and do what you need to do to get there, to be there for the person that needs you. If you can say yes to those five questions, there's a good chance that your personal life is in tune, that you're well-grounded, that you're on your way to success. If you've answered no to any of those questions, it's okay. It just means that you're in growth mode. And there's nothing wrong with being in growth mode. Because at some point in our life, we're all in growth mode. We all go through these ebbs and flows. It's like a cycle. But we need to bring ourselves to a place where we can love more, hurt less, and just be a better part of humankind. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast episode. It was a lot different, but it was intended to be. Because if I can use this message and this catalyst to uplift just one person, and I feel like I've made the world a better place. As always, we encourage you to tune in. And if you have an idea for something you want to hear, ping us. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear about what you want to talk about. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye now.